Hi, I'm here with my friend Ricky Laird. He's a milk painter. Right now he lives in Nova Scotia in the Annapolis Valley. He is building a tiny house, which is pretty cool. I've got some pictures in here to show you of that. And he's hunkering down during COVID, just like you and I. He's got uh, his people that help him out are committed to isolating and making sure that he stays well. Um, he's painting and sharing his thoughts. He's, we've decided that this will be the best way of telling his story is he's told it to me and I'm gonna try to relay it to you with good intentions of getting it somewhat accurate. I hope I do it justice, Ricky. You won't really have time to proofread it. Here we go. So when Ricky was seven, turn of events in his life, his he was put in an orphanage. Things weren't going well with his parents. And his mom was hospitalized and his dad uh, chose to put him and his younger brothers in an orphanage. So he uh, encountered fighting and getting beat up for the first couple of years of his orphanage experience. And then he learned to fight for himself, stand up for himself. The orphanage directors thought it would be best to put him in training with a boxer at a boxing school. And so Ricky became a super good fighter. <laughs> and he beat, you know, he still fought on it. He didn't stop. So at 14 years old, he got out of the orphanage and went to live with uh, his uncle and his aunt. Um, he and his three brothers still was not a good situation. The uncle was a, a drinker, heavy drinker, and the aunt didn't have good parenting skills. And there was hardships encountered, which I'm not going to try to explain. So by the time Ricky was 17, he had also followed some of the ways of escapism in drinking and partying with his friends. And he was involved in a rolled over accident and the vehicle rolled over Ricky. So he went from a handsome 17 year old boy, let's see, I'm gonna find this picture, to a quadriplegic. And it took him a while to realize that he wasn't going to walk again. It took him quite a long time. He was a really fit guy. This picture isn't that great, but you can see Ricky was a horse guy. Um, wish I could figure the edit feature, hey? Maybe we can figure that out later. Let's keep going. So he went through recovery and thanks to the strength of the training he had done in the boxing school and his, his fitness and uh, skill set, he addressed physical therapy really well. But it wasn't until he was finally at um, a rehab place where there was a lot of other men and some women who were rehabilitating that he realized he wasn't going to walk. What he did have, all he left had left functioning in his body was this bicep up here. So he could move the arm somewhat through the effort of the bicep. And now as a mouth painter, Ricky has just his mouth, he doesn't have his hands. He relies on his assistants for support I'm going to throw out a little bit more information about, about Ricky before we go into how he deals as a painter. I'm going to say that he um, spends a lot of time in bed and he uh, spends it there because when he paints, um, he gets so in the zone that he doesn't even think about um, the pain that is building up in his body. He said sometimes there'll be tears running down his face and he doesn't even recognize it. Um, this is what our conversation looked like. Ricky in bed, me with like absorbed in his conversation, but we talked for two hours from Ricky's bed the other day. This is the tiny house that he's building in Annapolis Valley. It's pretty amazing. It'll be retrofitted with things like a Murphy bathtub and all the different tools that are needed to help support him with his uh, physical abilities. There's another side shot of it. It looks pretty cool. I think it'll enable him to maybe come out to Calgary and live for a little while. One of the types of work that Ricky did as a man, um, oh, Ricky, I can't remember all the jobs that you did. You did a lot. One of them was you retrofitted vehicles. You organized a company that retrofitted vehicles. Um, after your rehabilitation in 
Nova Scotia, you did come out to Calgary. Um, I think that you lived before that, you lived on a farm with your wife and a lot of horses and you have always been a horse person. So there was a point that came when Ricky, his drinking was uh, very unhealthy. And when I asked him about uh, my question, you know, I want to talk about art for well-being and that Ricky, you must uh, be a great person to talk to about art for well-being. He said, frankly, it wasn't art that pulled him out of where his darkness was. And it wasn't being quadriplegic that was his greatest darkness. It was the drinking. And that if he um, hadn't have found AA, he probably wouldn't have found art. So that for him did come before. Um, before being able to start his art was to stop drinking. Um, also horses were a huge part of his rehabilitation and you'll see that theme running through his art and running through his life story. This next picture is where Ricky and I first met. We began studying together with Nancy Lynn Hughes at Hughes on 10th and we got to know each other quite well. Um, I was so amazed by Ricky um, he would be, come in with a, a caregiver would bring him down and Nancy would help him set up and he wasn't just learning how to paint but he's also colorblind so he doesn't see things the same way that we do let me see if I can explain he can see values and he can see certain types of colors he knows whether it's in the red category or the green category, but he can't tell if it's blue or green, for instance, or orange or red. So there's a lot of limitations. But with Nancy, he learned to identify by label, like he knew his warms and cools. And uh, I remember having this conversation with him about sometimes when he would paint at home and his helpers would help him and not realize that even though he's a quadriplegic, he's still a thinking artist and he still has his intentions. And he still knows how to read. And he knows that a cherry red is different than a, a strawberry red. So, or quinacrone versus, you know, I'm not gonna go into the colors right now, but um, Ricky uh, knows, and so he would have to teach his care people how to follow his instructions and not help him too much. Uh, help him by putting the colors where they're supposed to be, help him by putting the brush in his mouth, and so on. So Nancy was an amazing advocate for Ricky's independence and artistic growth, as she was for mine. It just, we both absolutely flourished in her, under her guidance. Back to Ricky as a little younger guy. So one of the things that he talked about for his efforts and well-being was his connection with horses. He's painted a lot of horses. And one of the things about his paintings, after he had studied with Nancy for a while, he was picked up by the World, I believe it's called World Mouth Painters Association. And he has to do a minimum number of paintings for them a year and provide them for sale as a, as a means of their, um, I believe that they sell them for him. Um, not for him, but for them, he gets paid a stipend, a stipend, whatever the word is. Oh my. I'm not a sophisticated interviewer here, but I hope you'll bear with me as I learn. So he has always been motivated by horses, both in terms of the healing energy of the horse and the spear and the feel. And so he paints them. Paints, paints scenes as well. Can you imagine? I struggle to paint with my hands, let alone there are, with your mouth and the soreness of your neck and the holding the brush right and understanding all the art too. Like it's dedication. I love this one. I think it's more recent. I shouldn't go too fast, hey? I want you guys to see his art. Huh. When Ricky moved away, I, I kind of missed him. And I would sometimes go into a grocery store. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was in a weird place too. I'd go into a grocery store and take photographs of flowers and uh, just send him a picture of a flower or some kind of gesture. And he painted some. And I'm not sure if this is one of them or not. But I did see some of the he painted and it kind of 
artistically helped us keep a connection across the miles. We talked about his style of painting being somewhat abstracted and Nancy encouraged that too, that we're not trying to capture a photo and we're painting painterly is our concept of our day. Expressionistic. Here he is working in his studio. He has a special way of setting up his easel. He had something specially built. He's got a real understanding of how to create things that physically work for people that have different abilities. Here he is with his care people in, in Nova Scotia. We all miss him out here, but he's really well loved out there. His family is from out east and he's, he's, uh, he's content. I'm gonna show a little video so you get a sense of what our conversation was like. I really haven't done justice. I'm gonna put some pictures up, maybe a few little paragraphs to help support this story. But for now, let's close with Ricky's conversation. And can't hear it, so we're gonna just turn it up. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Play it again. He uses it, he uses it in combination for the different colored greens he wants, like, he mm -hmm. likes, right? Yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah. He's figured it out, you know? And he keeps figuring it out all the time. That's what we've all got to do. Keep figuring it out. There's always going to be more problems. 